Hey, welcome to the shop. I'm Dave and this is Nub Tools. I'm going to show you in this video how I drilled this really cool fixture table for my shop. Now, if you're anything like me, you've probably wanted one of these for a really long time. There's just so many great clamps and accessories that you can use to just utilize these types of tables and to make welding and building and fabricating so much easier and faster. So I set out to make mine and I went through great lengths to make it as precise as possible. And at the very end of this video, there is some bonus footage where I actually show how I made the drill jig. But the majority of, the, of this video is going to be about the process of drilling this and what it took to do it. So let's get to it. Here is the uh, drill fixture when no one was looking. Uh, I finished this up. And then I also took this uh, top plate and got it all welded together. It was originally two 3 8 thick plate. Uh, because originally I thought I was going to do a 3 8 thick top and then at the last minute I decided I wanted to do 3 quarter and fortunately I had two of these pieces and it dawned on me that 3 8 plus 3 8 is 3 quarter so I decided to go ahead and just weld them together I would not recommend that so but I got it all cleaned up welded together uh, got the top cleaned off that's I wonder if I should maybe have not done that but We'll find out because after I got rid of the mill scale, which was painstaking, um, there was some there was a lot of pitting and stuff in the in the material, and it doesn't look fantastic, but it's it's really smooth and flat, and I think once we get all the holes in here, and depending on how I process this, this at the end with some sort of finishing, I think it'll it'll look pretty dang good. So um, in an ideal world, I would have gotten a piece of three quarter inch plate and probably just had it. Uh, Blanchard ground or surface ground and then we'd be starting off with a really nice piece, but Back to the drilling because that's what this is about but the way this is I got this planned out is the very first set The holes will just be clamped This fixture will be clamped down and once those holes are done then we'll be able to use these outer holes right here to locate off the previously drilled row and then these two holes will be for set of bolts to actually bolt the fixture down and it'll be rock solid and all these holes are um, nominal and then I've got some drill rod here that we're going to make um, some alignment pins so we should have really good repeatability and we'll, we'll make that on the lathe here in just a minute but for the drilling um, what I've got planned and this is going to be quite a bit of work. I just didn't want to go straight to a 5 8 drill because we're going to do 5 8 holes. And I wanted the, the best diameter size 5 8 hole and I wanted it to be as close to dead nuts as possible. Go ahead and make the alignment pins for these two holes. And I'm also going to make just a, take a short piece of this and use it as an alignment pin to put in the drill chuck in the mag drill centered over the hole and then I can turn the mag drill on and then I can pull all this out and begin drilling.
One down, 250 something holes to go. Okay. Well, I just did four holes and it was absolutely brutal. <laughs> this drill chuck that came on this uh, mag drill is needs to be taken apart and cleaned, but um, I don't have the wedges to separate it uh, to do that. So just have, gonna have to make do. The worst part about it is switching out all the drills, obviously, and doing that with a drill chuck that does not spin freely when you try to loosen it or tighten it uh, makes that difficult. Plus these clamps in your way are terrible. So I decided, I, I figured instead of trying to do the whole row on this way with these clamps, I just, I just did the two outside holes, which will give me the alignment holes uh, I need. And then I did these two holes directly in front of where the uh, hold down clamps are, or, um, I'm sorry, but the bolt where the bolts go in that hold this fixture down. And so I think what I can do is just do those four, pull the fixture off, clean the hole up, and then actually move over to the next row, bolt it down, use the alignment pins, and then I'll be able to do that entire row um, without any clamps. And so it should work, be a lot, lot more enjoyable that way. And then when that row is finished, I can then flip this fixture around 180 degrees, use those holes as alignment and clamp holes, and then finish out this first row. And hopefully by then I'll get into a groove and we'll go from there. The, the cutting of the metal is not bad at all. I mean, I'm, I'm running it pretty slow and using that pilot drill first, it, it drills through the three quarter, I mean, with not much effort at all. And then when I come in with the 3964 drill, I mean, it's it goes pretty dang fast. I mean, it, it doesn't take very long. I spend more time getting the drills in and out of the chuck than I do actually drilling. I mean, it drills pretty dang fast, so I'm happy about that. Um, I'm hoping this drill chuck's gonna loosen up over time. Um, so let me go ahead and remove these clamps and we'll get ready to do the next row. Plus we can take a look at our first set of holes. Pretty excited about that. The finish on the holes are amazing. Super polished and I've got one of the stops, the fixture stops that we can try out in there as well to see how the fit is. Goodbye clamps. Ta-da! Looks pretty sweet. Whole lot more to go. And then here's one of the, these fixture stops. Very snug fit. I think it's going to work out awesome. I measured one of these and they're about a thou under. And this is, the reamer is um, 0.625 even, right? Nominal. And, you know, it's possible that with this whole setup with the drill and whatnot, that maybe it walled out the whole a half a thou, maybe. So we only got about a thou or two clearance. Um, Man, I don't, the way this feels, I, I really don't think it's over five eighths, the whole, it's like really, really good. So we'll go ahead and get this all cleaned up and move this over to these holes and do the second row, flip it around and then finish this row. And then we should be able to just haul butt that way. Sort of.
if I did everything right, this should line up. Oh, beautiful. little bit of a bow in this. I think I can put a little clamp right here. Oh, much better. All right, get, get the drilling. All right, so after last weekend, um, I realized how painful it was to switch out all three of my drills and alignment pin. So what I decided to do to try to keep, make this go a lot faster is try to machine down all the shanks to the exact same size. That way I just have to make a quarter turn to loosen. Well that went a whole lot better. Well, good morning, everybody. Today is day three. It is going to be the second full day. Um, yesterday, I was able to get all of this done. Eight of these holes were from the very first day, which was just a, you know, just a small portion of a day. And but yesterday, I put in about fourteen hours. Today, I'll probably put in about ten, ten to twelve, depending. Um, and then I'll probably try to do a little bit on Monday before I return this rental. And then we'll, I'll pick it up next weekend and do it again. So things went way better yesterday. Having the drills all machined down to the same size made this so much faster and easier. And so the hardest thing was just not falling asleep. But, you know, listening to audiobooks, music, Seinfeld episodes, um, made it somewhat enjoyable but just got to keep on going so hopefully by the end of today or end of monday which will be the fourth day which i'm just going to do a little bit in the morning before i have to return this drill i'm hoping to be close to halfway done so this might be two more weekends um and but there's no turning back now <laughs> so i just got to finish it I've just gotten to hole 185 and I thought it'd be a fun time to stop for a second and show you the drill sequence that I'm doing on every single one of these holes. And it'll become pretty clear to you why it's taking me so stinking long. It's, it's crazy how long this has taken me. So, but I'm in it to win it. So I'm gonna keep on going. I just finished this one and now I'm gonna move over to this one. Hole 185. So here we go. Take the drill guide from the previous hole. This is 5 eighths. This is my final hole, hole size. Put the guide in. Turn the magnet off and go ahead and put it in, move it into place. Turn the magnet on. All right, for, so for the first step is my pilot hole, and it's a 13 30 seconds, which happens to be the drill size that I'm gonna use for the through holes for the bolts. That's gonna bolt this table down, or this tabletop down. 
And so here's a 13 30 second drill guide with a 5 8 body. It'll fit right into this 5 8 drill guide. And I'm just going to use this to get the drill started. Since this smaller guide doesn't have a clamp down bolt. And then I'll pull it out. All right, now I'm gonna take this 5 8 bushing out and put the second bushing, which is a 3964, which is my pre-reamer drill size. And the one, one, one reason I'm doing that is I don't want the drill chips to just spin inside of my, my final hole size um, bushing to take any chance of it wearing out prematurely. So, plus I need, this is gonna be my second drill, so I'm not really, making any extra steps at least not too badly and then i'll finish drilling out this pilot hole and i'm not concerned about this bushing getting more out from the all right now we'll put in the 39 drill bit. And this thing drills really easy now that this pilot hole's in here. All right, for the best part, the reamer. Take this bushing out. Take my magnet. Make sure it's nice and clean. Now we're back to the 5 8 bushing. Let me take the 5 8 um, reamer. And that's it. Now I did that 185 times. <laughs> hey, well, I finally made it to the final hole of these 5 8 holes. I didn't think I'd ever make it here. I've got probably 45, 50 hours in doing all these, and it was absolutely brutal. But I'm so happy to be here now. And after this hole, there's about 15 more holes to do for the mounting bolts but that's going to feel completely different and I'm excited to do it. And after that, we'll be just be done drilling on this uh, well tabletop. So man, that was an experience.
Well, we got the plate back from the grinders and it looks amazing. I'm so excited about this. After I took off the mill scale from the top of this, uh, this A36 plate, there was all kinds of pits and the surface was kind of wavy and I just did not like it. It was terrible. And although this is taking the plate even farther and making it that much more complicated, I just couldn't help myself. And I had a local uh, grind shop that has huge machines um, that did me a big solid and then kissed the top of this plate. Now I didn't go all the way with this thing and have it ground on both sides or even had it ground flat in the free state. So this plate is currently right now probably not super flat. Now because when it's put on the table the magnet pulls the down flat and then they grind it and it's flat at that moment but as soon as they take it off the table if there's any spring in the metal it'll come out. But So whenever I actually get this on the frame there'll be plenty of shimming being done to try to work out any uneven spots to get this top flat. But for a welding table, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty dang nice. Um, and so the final stretch is finally here. And now that the grind, the surface has been ground, now I feel comfortable going ahead and finishing it out. And so what I'm gonna do is put some really nice, uh, put a nice eighth inch radius on this outside top corner I think I'm gonna try a 16th radius on the holes. I think that'll look really, really killer. And then on the bottom side, I'm gonna do some 45 degree uh, chamfers on all the holes. That way, when I use the ball lock type hardware for these, so you don't have to put a nut on the bottom, the, 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 the little ball bearings will have a chamfer to sit into. And I think, and I think that'll work out good. And I think I'm gonna chamfer this bottom outside edge and not radius it. Now I'm gonna use my little battery powered uh, router. I've never done this before. I did one little test uh, practice on a piece of scrap metal and it seemed to work pretty good. And these are just uh, wood routing bits that have a carbide uh, brazed um, cutting edge on them and with a bearing guide. And we're gonna see how it goes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna start on the bottom on this one. So I need to flip this over and do all the work on the bottom, which is gonna be just chamfers. So let me go ahead and get this flipped over and we'll get started. All right, well I got all the chamfers done on the holes and on the outside edge. And let me tell you what, this little router kicked butt and just used the same bit, all 253 holes. It cut them perfectly from the first one to the last one. And they are so nice. Like it would be hard to tell that they weren't done on the milling machine. Now when it came to the outside edge, everything started off pretty good, but then I started noticing an inconsistent edge and that's because the sides are not perfectly square with the face. And so that was a failure on my part not to make sure that these were really dang square. Um, and so I went back and tried to adjust the depth on the shallower chamfers and it was really hard to get it to blend right. So I ended up having to file a couple of areas. So the outside corner doesn't look perfectly machined. Um, but it's still, the, the corner is broken and it looks good, uh, but the holes are just unbelievable. So I'm hoping when we flip it over to the top side and do the radius on the outside edge that this, that this unsquare side is a little bit more forgiving with the, ch with the radius than it is on the chamfer. So we'll find out. If not, I'll have to try to blend um, and deal with that. So uh, 
Kind of regret I didn't take more time to square those sides up a little bit better. Um, but so let me go ahead and get this flipped over and then we'll start on the top side. Looks like I can make it a little bit deeper. I'm just afraid to catch the top side. I think I'm gonna try to make it go just a hair deeper. Looks good. up the holes and they came out so nice now when I got about halfway through the plate I could tell it was starting to wear so I just went ahead and finished all of them and then ordered another router bit and I'll run it I'll run back through these holes and just as like a finish pass just to get them looking as good as these uh, very first ones because they just came out stellar. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the eighth inch radius uh, router bit in the router and then I'll start going around the outside edges and hopefully that comes out okay. So let's give it a shot. Well here we are, we finally made it to the end. I got the, cor the corner radiuses finished out, did a bunch of fluffing and buffing on the edges and the top, and she looks really good. Now she just needs some legs. So, you know, after going through all of this crazy journey, um, you know, I have to ask myself, was it worth it? Well, it's here now, so it was worth it. But, you know, if I were to do this again, I would probably sub this out to a machine shop or at least get some prices to find out. But, you know, if you've got the time and you've got the will to do it, then, hey, this is, this is, this is a route to take. But um, I just had so much fun making it, and I learned so much, and I'm glad you were here with me to um, kind of experience this. And I hope you learned something that will help you on your project. So, um, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's some bonus footage coming up that'll show you how I made the drill jig and then also how I modified the drills. And if you like this content, again, please subscribe, hit that like button, and there's going to be more to come. So until next time, take it easy.
So what I decided to do to try to make this go a lot faster is try to machine down all the shanks to the exact same size. That way I just have to make a quarter turn to loosen and then to tighten. And so the first thing I did was just go to the lathe and rough it out. On this one, I'm just gonna leave it round. But on these three, I'm actually gonna machine the flats or attempt to, see if you can see that, to match this drill on both the reamer and the pilot and the pre-reamer drill. So let's go see how that, that goes. Thank you. 